Production funding for Behind the Headlines is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. The accelerating transformation of the riverfront tonight on Behind the Headlines. I'm Eric Barnes, President and Executive Editor of The Daily Memphian. Thanks for joining us. I'm joined tonight by Carol Coletta, President and CEO of the Memphis River Parks Partnership. Thanks for being here again. Glad to be here. So you, uh, as we taped this, which is basically a week ago, you are about to open a number of new features and you got a big, you broke some news with a big donation from the Hyde Family Foundation, which has supported so many parks and green spaces, other things in the city. But talk about maybe what is opened this new, this first new feature and how that sets the stage for what's to come. Yeah, if you think about what most of us think of as the riverfront, it's, it's the river from Jefferson to maybe Georgia or Carolina on the south. So, you know, it's that big expanse of, of riverfront that really um, is neighbors the core city, right? The core downtown. So um, we are opening a um, five mile trail along the riverfront that will connect finally the Wolf River Greenway on the north end of Mud Island all the way down to Big River Crossing. We've never had that trail. It's the most obvious trail in the city, it, right? It is, it's funny that it's it, it's very significant in, in part. And it's the last it's, one. Exactly, because it's been talked about. I've lived in Memphis 24 years, and I remember debates about this when I moved here. And right. over the last five and 10 years, debates about this. Why wouldn't there be study after study that came forward that, you know, some people sort of cynically said, oh, yeah, we spent X thousand dollars for a, a study that said put a trail along the beautiful riverfront. And so how did you get that done? Well, in, in part, the pieces were there. And so part of this is just joining up the pieces, finding the connection points uh, among those pieces. Uh, some of it is new. And it's interesting, it's a collaboration of funders. The Hyde Family Foundation provided funding for some of those connections and the signage that was very necessary to doing the trail. The City of Memphis Department of uh, Housing and Community Development did the part of the trail that goes from the Coast Guard along the west side of the flood wall, which a lot of people have never seen. It's really stunning. Uh, and so along that part of the trail down to the Tennessee Welcome Center to the south, and then the Community Redevelopment Agency came in and did some uh, invitations on the east end of A.W. Willis Bridge over to uh, Mud Island uh, to uh, connect it better to Uptown. So ultimately what we wanna have is a great connection among all of the um, neighborhoods along the river, as well as between two of our major trails now as Wolf River Greenway, you know, right, you know, sort of roars to completion and Big River Crossing now just got better with the paved trails that, you know, in Big River Trails over in Arkansas. It's just, it really is a magnificent natural resource for Memphis, not only for Memphians, but also for visitors to Memphis since there's more and more recreation travel. And just to clarify for people who maybe aren't as close to this, you and we write about it a lot, you obviously are very close to it and have been. The uh, Big River Crossing is the Harahan Bridge, the old bridge as, as a lot of people refer to it. And the, the crossing over there to Arkansas, over by uh, Church of the River and back in Martyrs Park and so on. Um, and Wolf River Greenway reaches all the way from the eventually all the way out to what Ghost River to, to Fake County. Yeah. I mean, it'll connect Just all along that. the Wolf River through parks and so on. And various yeah. sections have opened, but at what, a 40 something million dollar plan that we've talked about on here? You're not directly involved in that. I don't, that's no. not under your purview. So, no, but right. we very much support it and connect to it. I yeah. mean, that, and I think all these connections make every single piece more valuable. Yeah. Um, that this this opening this green path is uh, that you just talked about that is sort of oddly significant given how long it's been talked about and how hard it was to pull the pieces together um, and in part you described that because you talked about what three or f and just in talking about that five mile trail you named four or five different entities who had to come together on that which is often seems to be the case with with pulling these kinds of projects together um, that is just a first 
very visible step in a whole lot of things that are about to happen. So you have a plan of what, 50 to $70 million? Is that what you're looking for, for investments and a whole range of things? And maybe we'll, what we'll end up doing is kind of walking through where you are with all the various parts, from Tomley Park to you know updates on uh, what people think of as the Mud Island River Park and so on. But give the overall of this 50 to $70 million plan. Well, again, if you, uh, just to say Riverline is the first piece of this um, of this new bit of work we're doing, and I say bit of work, it really is the heart of the riverfront and the heart of downtown, thus the heart of our city. So think about, um, we have the river line that connects it all. We have a new, what we call river garden. It is in the old Mississippi River Park, um, formerly Jeff Davis Park, uh, that runs to the west side of Riverside Drive from Jefferson to Court. So it's it's at the north end um, of, of what we think of as the riverfront. That is has been transformed into what we call River Garden. That is, I will tell you, it sets a new standard for what we think of as public space in Memphis. It is just a beauty. It's a one block park. It's really sweet. It's right on the harbor. So from that park, you are both looking across the harbor into Mud Island, but you're also looking straight down the river. You can actually see how all of the river is joined together from that park, which I hadn't realized until we started building it. But it is an absolute beauty. It has all native plants, uh, plants that will um, bloom again and again. So we have, we have fields, we have uh, this wonderful uh, pavilion, which leads to this observation nest that again gives you a view straight down the harbor and onto the river. Uh, you can see all the way to the dock and beyond to Tomley Park. Uh, we have hammocks underneath. We have uh, a pavilion for dining. It and is all this is free and open to the public. Free and open to the public. It yeah. is uh, it, it is really beautiful. Right. And we have a hawk. We have our own hawk. <laughs> Honestly, I saw him this week and this Was that hawk, planned or it just turned out there was a hawk there? Apparently hawks have used, because we're in a big flyway, right? Uh, the Mississippi River Flyway. This hawk is ginormous and decides to sit in this tree at the south end of the park. So when you see him, I mean, you cannot miss him. Right. <laughs> so you, in taking over this, and, and people who maybe aren't, again, as close to this, there was the Riverfront Development Corporation, which developed Beale Street Landing and had control, I believe, of Tom, Tomley Park and ultimately had the authority for a period of time over Mud Island River Park. Let's switch this. So your organization is really the successor, the transformation of that is a fair way to put that, huh. of the Riverfront, RDC, as people maybe remember it. Let's talk about Mud Island. What, I mean, it is uh, closed right now. Is that correct? Closed for the winter? No. Not Mud Island, but the, the, the River Park and the, the museum and the amphitheater. We almost have to break it down. And the, and the, um, the monorail, the, the, the track that goes over, the train that goes over. Let's break down the various pieces of what's going on with what a lot of people, when they say Mud Island, they, they really mean Mud Island River Park. They do. Um, and Mud Island River Park, we decided this summer that we would uh, treat it like a park. So you can walk over to Mud Island uh, all year round. You can walk into it, you can walk through it, uh, but we've closed down for the season, the museum and uh, any uh, food and- uh, The big, the big uh, not pool, but- Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah all, that, that, all that, all that we have to closed. drain that or else okay. it cracks. I mean, so we drain that for the winter. But, but still, what, what's interesting about Mud Island is you can still walk it, bike it, you know, you can use the a model scooter. Of the river, all yeah, that stuff. It, now it doesn't have water in it, but you can go all the way to the southern right. tip. I saw people walking there today, actually. So uh, it still acts as a park like any other park. You can go in it freely, you can move around in it. And um, so that is still an asset, and we see runners and, and bikers and pedestrians use that all the time. What is next then? Will, that, will those amenities open up in the spring or will they be renovated oh. or? Oh yeah, yeah, they will open up and they were freshened up. I mean, the museum, for instance, was freshened up this summer, uh, closed for a couple of weeks and reopened and which it felt lighter and fresher than it had felt in 40 years. I mean, it was great. Um, so, and there is more to come on Mud Island. We think that uh, Mud Island, uh, can be, ought to be, I mean, it's a very special place. You're sitting out in the middle of the Mississippi River. I mean, you know, it's pretty great. And then with the lighting of both bridges, you've got this great view, you're really close. I mean, it's in your foreground. 
Um, so but how the facility itself, anyone who's out there would say yeah, it's pretty dated, yeah, even from yeah, yeah. some of the areas you're talking about. When you look at it, it feels dated. It well, looks dated. Yeah, and the funny thing is, I think Mud Island, um, from a distance, actually looks less inviting than it is once you get there. Because there's a big facing wall yeah, and it yeah. seems far and, away. And, and, you know, it, it feels very removed. kind yes. of brutalist and so forth. But when you're over there, I think there are really some beautiful spaces. I mean, for instance, the grove that of trees that has grown up on the west side, the riverside of the amphitheater is absolutely stunning. I mean, very beautiful, mature trees. So, so I, all I would say is that most people in Memphis, I find, have very nostalgic feelings about Mud Island. You know, we all went there at one time. Uh, and so we, we sort of, there was something to love about it. There was a sweetness about it. Uh, but, but people are restless about what it, what it ought to be for the future. This, I would actually say there's this nostalgia tinged with disappointment. Yes. That it never achieved. And Fair. it was one of those things, I mean, that getting kind of off track here, but it was one of those things that went back to a, 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 full, a feeling in Memphis that you couldn't, that big projects went wrong. People would say that about when I moved to Memphis, people would talk about how the pyramid was supposed to have a roller coaster and it was supposed to be all these great things and it actually was just kind of okay. And they would say the same thing about Mud Island. And as other projects started up, say the Green Line, say the transformation of Shelby Farms, Overton Park, you know, uh, all these things that we've been talking about downtown, mm -hmm. People would constantly on this show and, and, and in reporting we would do, they would refer to, well, but, you know, Mud Island or well, but the pyramid, right? And, and so what, what can be done to kind of with Mud Island to erase that history of a bit of disappointment and to update it? Or, or is that just its own sort of planning process that's going to take more time? That's a, it's a really interesting question because, uh, you know, I don't want to get too wonky, but let's just say. Oh, we can. It's behind the headlines. You're oh, okay. okay. You can do it. It's about 40 years old, right? And it was, I, I have to tell you, I was there when Mud Island was built. Mud Island was built to be Bicentennial Park. You know this? I did not know that. There you go. Bit of Memphis history. It was supposed to be a $21 million bicentennial park dedicated to the history and folklore of the Mississippi River. Can you tell I made a few <laughs> speeches about it years ago? And as the expense grew, the, the timeline was lengthened uh, for building, for construction. Cost went up, and as it lengthened, the program didn't change architecturally, but the programming and the promotion of it changed. And so it it was sold in the end as a theme park, but it was never designed as a theme park. And so you have these sort of two conflicting visions of Mud Island from the get-go. Now, fast forward or slow forward, 40 years later, you've got aging infrastructure that really has not been, I mean, it's city, it's a city asset. We don't own the asset yeah, as the right, partnership, yeah, right? The 501c3 that we run doesn't own it, but we maintain it, we operate it. So we're operating on 40 year old, you know, uh, uh, infrastructure and, and nobody has an appetite to renew the infrastructure because of the program, right? Nobody believes in the program that the asset, the assets were built to support thus. You have to say, is there something you can layer on to the asset as it exists? Or at some moment, is there a reason to radically change the asset, right? Alter the asset, which we know is going to cost a whole lot of money. We think we may have an interesting three to five year holding uh, plan for the island and we're working uh, on that now. But we'll are see. You, are you going to talk about that or no? That's still. I'm not okay. uh, because there, there's still too many unknowns. And, and last thing I want to do is promise something we can't deliver. But there are a, a number of people. That's that, never happened about the riverfront before. Yeah, right. Well, OK. <laughs> but um, the, there are a number of people who have uh, advanced ideas uh, in, in the recent past. And now, again, because the excitement about the riverfront is growing and people who, you know, who have ideas are now feeling like, well, wait a minute, maybe, maybe we could bring this forward. Maybe now the time is right. So we're listening to those ideas. We're working with some folks. We'll see what we can come up with. 
Let's shift down to uh, Tomley Park, the, yeah. the the big park open that where uh -huh. Memphis and May takes place. Um, you've got, uh, I think you you've hired architects, right? Is that correct for yes. Tomley Park? Yes. And looking at some of the plans which are on your website and some of the ideas, a there's a lot of criticism of the space that it's just sort of a plain wide open space there's not there's not a lot of shade so in the summer it's very hot there's not there aren't really amenities there particular I mean, there's a little bit but not a lot of amenities from whether it's playgrounds or it's a band shell or whatever could go in there so what happens next with that big expanse well uh, let me jump back one sure. minute because you skipped five blocks yeah, of riverfront yes okay with the historic cobblestone landing okay, and sure. I just think it's important for yeah. people to know that project is funded. It's starting. It should start about, we think, first, first quarter next year. And all of those cobblestones will be, uh, you know, all the holes and the patches and uh, there's no edge to it. So the cobblestones keep slipping into the water. Uh, the utility poles stick up everywhere. All those utilities will be put underground. All the cobblestones will be um, patched and, and renewed so that our, the largest, we have the largest historic cobblestone landing in the country. And I think we will be, all of a sudden, instead of being this kind of like really ugly five block long patch of, of prime real estate, all of a sudden that gets fixed and it becomes a connector, which is really exciting. And, and, and what, let's stick with that for a second. Yeah. It, it gets patched, which again is one of those things that's been talked about as long as I can remember yeah, I what would happen with the cobblestones. And patch sounds bad, but I mean replacing cobblestones. Yeah, and it, are, will there be then amenities there? Will there be paths? Will there be trees? I mean, what, what besides patching, what's going on there? Well, what it makes possible is activity at the foot of the cobblestones when we, when we do this work. So that's really important uh, because that begins to activate the harbor in an exciting way. I mean, think about it. We've got a Stillwater Harbor that you can go out. I mean, even a novice can kayak, paddleboard, do all kinds of activity on the water, but we, it just goes unused. I mean, it's like, oh, why would you leave a major water resource at your city's front door unused? Uh, so. I think that's an exciting part. The other part that's exciting is at the top of the cobblestones today, there is a cobblestone walkway, right? There's a sidewalk. It's pretty narrow, and now with the introduction of scooters and bikes, it's, it's just simply does not accommodate that kind of traffic we're getting, which the traffic's great, but we need, you know, a, a more of a promenade right. to uh, connect it. So that's another thing we'll be working on is how do you uh, make a much more generous uh, walkway along that hole. Now that doesn't sound very sexy, right? Connections well, never did do. The green line. Ne neither did the green line. And I, I mean, think that's why we always undervalue them when we're planning them and talking about them. And then, you know, once they're done, we're all like, well, right. duh. Yeah, and so you say funded, how was it funded? It was funded by uh, uh, TDOT money, the Tennessee Department of Transportation with uh, uh, transportation dollars and the uh, city of Memphis. And city of Memphis, not private funding. On no, the cobblestones. no. Okay. City of Memphis had to provide a to make to make the uh, state funds work. The city had to provide uh, a, I think a one to ten match. I got you. So, so it's, it's 90, great. Ninety percent coming from the state. Yeah, 10 it's great. From the state. It's a great deal for the city. Okay. We'll move down to now, Tomley, Tomley Park. Park. Yeah, to, no, and that's that's great. We're skipping over Beale Street Landing, which I do want to come back to. But let's just talk about Tomley Park. Um, what kind of uh, changes are being discussed there? Yeah. Well. Tomley, Tomley Park is um, a bit of a stranded asset at the moment, right? And not only is it flat as a pancake with very little shade, uh, it's also, it doesn't feel joined up with the rest of downtown, right? So it doesn't make the real estate, the, the adjacent real estate valuable in the way it should because of the lack of connections again, right? right. We're right valuable back there. Valuable in terms of dollar value or valuable as sort of an amenity? Well, both, because yeah. amenities do have dollar value. And so what, I mean, the, the best amenities to build in a, uh, in a downtown area, you want things that people want to use every day, like Memphians want to use every day. When they use it every day, they want to live near it. When they want to live near it, then they want to work near it. So, so that's where you get the real, you know, juice is to create something that is used every day or weekly, regularly by locals. So we, you know, we believe that's the kind of resource Tomley Park has to be. We're looking at it from bluffs to banks. Uh, we've uh, commissioned uh, Studio Gang, which did the Memphis Riverfront concept, 
to be the lead firm on that. Uh, the good news about Studio Gang is they see this asset very much as, a, as part of a much larger picture of the riverfront and of downtown and of South Memphis and North Memphis. So they, they look at this asset in context, in a context that maybe a, just a park designer would not. They have brought on skate uh, studio, Scape Studio is a landscape architecture firm. They will be doing a, a giant amount of work because the, in the end this is a park, but it's much more than a park. It's a it's a civic it's a major civic statement. It's the first thing a lot of people see when yeah. they enter Memphis. So um, that the timeline on that is we are uh, we've announced the firms. They are at work. We've seen about two to three weeks of work on their part, and the just the early look is super exciting. Um, I think they're headed in the right direction, and the right direction is to join this up, you know, up the bluff, make, you know, so you don't have these stairs to nowhere, right? right? And you've got you've got ways to get up and down the bluff. Well, and it's not even so much stairs to nowhere, it's stairs to a very, very uh, busy, busy yeah. and, and uh, to four lanes where people are driving very fast, very particularly fast. into work late or out. They're kind of a you know parkway kind of situation coming down a hill, one of the few Expressway hills in kind of Memphis. Yeah, basically, you're coming off the expressway down one of the few hills, major hills in Memphis. What are the plans there in terms of, there was a there was an effort to go down to two lanes and try that out some years ago. It was, mixed, it was met with mixed uh, uh, reactions. Is that on the tables changing the, the traffic flow of that, of Riverside Drive? Well, most major cities in the country, uh, in the world, have realized that riverfronts have better uses than to carry fast-moving cars. Not to say they shouldn't carry any cars, but fast-moving cars on a waterfront does not increase the value of the waterfront or the adjacent property. Um, there, there are two pieces of evidence that I think are really important. One is uh, the study of the results of that test you just mentioned, because that test was very abrupt. It, there was no design involved. It's like, let's just close the west side of the median on Riverside Drive, pinch it down to two lanes, see what happens. And three things happened. It's interesting. One is traffic still moved faster than the speed limit on two lanes. Two, there was no discernible increase in traffic throughout downtown. So it's not like you reduce the traffic and you created traffic jams. And three, um, accidents increased slightly, but the severity plunged because it was more like uh, a, a back end, you know, right. kind of situation where there was more of a tap than the big accidents you were having when cars were moving at high speed. So that's one piece of evidence of what that gives us suggestions about what could happen in the future if you make changes. Go ahead. Yeah, well, just with a few minutes left, the other big part when we talk about Tom Lee Park is Memphis in May. So the Beale Street Music Festival, yep. the, the barbecue championship, uh, you know, they dominate, pretty much take over the park for what, a month or so, uh, or month plus for all those events. Are they, how do you make plans for Tom Lee Park that incorporate Memphis in May, or does Memphis in May go somewhere else? Oh, I hope Memphis and May doesn't go anywhere else. Uh, we've been working with, I don't want to speak for Memphis and May, yeah, they need it, to speak for themselves, yes, but, but let me say that um, we have, uh, we met with Memphis and May early. We, we went through a, a series of design discussions with Memphis and May to understand what their uh, needs were, their specifications were for the music fest as well as barbecue. Uh, we uh, did early designs to show how those needs could be met. Uh, those, uh, and again, because we're still working with Studio Gang, they did that work with Memphis and May. They are working again to make sure that, that the needs are not only met, but exceeded, uh, but you can still have a great park the other 50 weeks of the year when Memphis and May is not in the park. And so I really don't believe there is a choice to be made. You know, ooh, do we serve Memphis and May or ooh, do we serve the, you know, citizens who want to use the park the other 50 weeks. I think the, the, what we have to design for is meeting both and making uh, great festival grounds and a great park, and I think we can do it. Uh, for just a couple minutes left, uh, Bill Street Landing. How, how many, um, a, another project that sort of disappointed in some ways, ex, you know, it, it, it took longer than people thought, but there are a whole lot of, of 
tour ships or boats, river boats coming in there. Wh and where they're does that increasing. Stand? And they're and increasing. They're increasing. Uh, and you know, you're seeing now some more contemporary river going boats, which is great. We also have a, a huge number of excursion boats, you know, in Memphis Queen Line, uh, both of which are important to creating activity. What it we also have, by the way, a very successful green roof and a great splash pad. Uh, that is used by families every single day. What's not, what never worked in Beale Landing is what's underneath the green roof. It feels kind of subterranean, it feels tunnel-like, and trying to figure out what... And there's, the restaurant, is. Not, they've never been able to pull off a restaurant. There. No, and, and I, I think that's not because we didn't have the right restaurant or the right, you know, golf cart and all the things that you have been tried, because really good, I mean, Patrick and Denny Riley tried it, and they're uh, the two of the best. Jessica. So um, I, I think what we need to do is reimagine what's underneath the green roof, reconsider that, and think about what new uses work there. Very briefly, 15 seconds. <clears throat> the, uh, there are a bunch of boats, uh, ships parked in the harbor. Some of them kind of junky looking by I think most estimations. Some of them are still working and owned. Is there a plan for getting those out of the harbor? Uh, we are Memphis Queen Line. Those are owned by Memphis Queen Line. They are cleaning up now, um, and we'll, yes, we'll get there. Okay. Thank you, Carol. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Join us again next week.